What's up, guys? It's Jay, more than I have to kill, and I'd like to welcome you to the first episode of a brand new series on my channel called Road to 30. In this series, I'm basically going to give you an autobiography of my life. I'm going to tell you my life story and past experiences and things about my family and the decisions that I've made in my life that have come to shape my entire road to exactly the point that I am in my life right now. And by the time I'm done this series, I'm going to be 30 years old. Which means that I'm 29 motherfucking years old. I've answered that a lot of times on my channel. And some people still ask. So yes, I am 29 years old. I will be 30 this year. And uh, <laughs> it's been a hell of a road. And I guess, you know, with any story, we might as well start at the beginning. And, uh, you know, every other uh, movie you ever see that has somebody going through their past, I guess it's best to start with the parents. So I'm going to give you a basic rundown of my, uh, my, my home life as a child and, uh, you know, what type of uh, structure or lack of structure, I should say, about my, uh, you know, my parental units in my childhood. So I might say some things in this video that you don't agree with. Uh, I know a lot of people are saying, you know, you should always love your parents unconditionally and never speak bad about them. And I agree. If you love your parents, do not speak badly about them. However, I do not really have a deep, profound, inset love for my parents or my family for that matter. And I will explain why in these videos. So let's start off with my dad. I've already mentioned this a lot on my channel and it used to really hurt me as a kid. Like I used to really think like, you know, growing up without a dad because I don't know my dad. I think I have maybe like one or two memories that actually have my father in them, but I never really spoke to him. I was too young to really actually, like, you know, be like, hey, what's going on, man? You know, what do you like? What do you do? Like, I know a few things about him. Like, he's a Philadelphia fan, and that's where I get being a Philadelphia fan. He's actually a mechanic, and that's where I get my natural mechanical abilities from. Outside of that, I don't really know him. Never really met him. Never really lived with him. Uh, like I said, I, I've been around him, like, once or twice in my life. Very, very young and no actual memories of the motherfucker. So there's no reason to dwell on him because I've already gotten past that. Like, as a kid growing up without a father, you know, you always look at your friends and your dads and you're like, man, you know, I wish I could go do that, blah, blah, blah. But I got to partake in a lot of those activities uh, with my friends and my friends' dads. Like, you know, go into a first baseball game. We actually, me and my friends, we actually made like a little yard sale and we sold little trinkets that we found around the house that we were allowed to sell nothing really big and we all raised eight dollars which was enough to go to my first philadelphia phillies game that's right eight motherfucking dollars to go to a philly and it was it was nosebleed seats all the way up at the top of the veteran stadium it was uh <laughs> it was the worst seats ever phillies versus dodgers uh, i think phillies won yeah phillies won that game i think it was something like Seven to one, big blowout, really big uh, blowout. But that's not the topic of the commentary. That's not what we're talking about. Like I said, growing up without a father, I was just like, you know, I was angry at the world. I was like, wow, I could not have a dad. Then growing up, you know, I kind of realized after living with my mother that my mother is not a very nice person. Uh, she is the type of person that will throw you under the bus to make herself look better. That is just the type of person my mother is, and my mother is actually a pretty decent person outside of family relationship, but there's an ongoing theme in my family that, you know, people in our family are crippled towards maintaining a relationship towards each other, and that's just because my family has never really had, like, any type of family structure there, so, uh, Let's move on to my mom. I've already told you, like, you know, my mom's not really the greatest person. I, I stopped living with my mom when I was, like, 16 years old. I moved out. I kind of bounced around from friend house to friend house. Like, uh, it, it, was, it was pretty all right. It was all right because, uh, you know, I got out in the world on my own very, very young. And uh, it's prepared me for a lot of situations that I didn't think I'd probably be able to handle if I didn't go through them. So, like I said, every little bit of decision that has gone along my entire way through my life has actually, like, has actually been pretty decent decisions. Like, I've fucked up. I've fucked up a whole hell of a lot. But, uh, you know, considering where I am today, I think I'm doing pretty damn good. I mean, you know, I'm not hurting for money. 
we're not like in desperate dire straits to fucking go to the poor house. So you know what? All the bullshit that I've gone through since I was a kid has uh has made me a very strong motherfucking person, very strong and actually a very I I, I don't know a determined person to not go back to the type of poverty that I grew up in. So like I said, poverty growing up. My mother was about 16 years old when she got pregnant with my brother. She, she had him when she was 17. Then she got pregnant again with me when she was 19, I believe. 19. So my mom was not very, uh, she was not very safe with sex. She got uh, pregnant at a very, very young age. And it's probably the reason why she's not a very good parent is because she was actually a teenager when, you know, the, the parental pregnancy was thrust upon her and she had to assume the role of matriarch because my grandpa and my grandma would not allow her to live in the house while she was pregnant and unwed and uh, she actually went married my dad and then once my dad found out she was pregnant with me he kind of split which kind of makes me think like all right, all right, all right, I know you guys are gonna be like what the fuck morning you should be on Jerry fucking Springer but all right listen to this my mom, like I said, she is not easy to live with. She is not. My mom's a total bitch. She really is. And I've told my mom to her face that she's a total bitch. And it's the reason why I only talk to my mom, like, once a year. Like, I'm, I'm serious. Like, once a year. She'll, she'll call me at, like, 3 in the morning and leave a message on my answer machine. The cat scratched me. I need to go to the house. Motherfucker, I live 45 minutes away from you. If you need to go to the hospital... Call the goddamn ambulance. If it's not an emergency, then why are you calling me? Like, seriously. Really. That's just the time. She's a really weird motherfucker. So anyway, like I was saying, she was with my father and my brother, and they were like a happy family. And then my mom got pregnant, and then all of a sudden, my dad split, which makes me think that my mom, who is a twin of my aunt, they're twins, makes me think... That since right around the same time, my aunt's boyfriend split town. He split, and my cousin doesn't know who his father is either. Now check this out. Me and my cousin, we look almost dead alike. Like, I mean, I, I understand because my mom are twins, you know, the, the genes are going to be shared. And, like, we have a possibility of looking alike. But what I think that happened is I think my mom, one night... Fucked my aunt's boyfriend, got pregnant with me, and my dad was like, fuck this shit, I am not raising a kid that's not mine, and he bounced, which would make a lot of sense, because my brother and myself, we don't look alike, we really do not look alike, and we don't care a lot of uh, the same traits, especially since my brother is very, very dark, he's like, like a dark olive brown skin, and I am whiter than him, I am... The whitest motherfucker you have ever seen in my life. Like, I am pale. You can see through my skin. You can see my veins popping out through my skin. It's like Hulk Hogan. It's like, I am a real American. No! We are not singing in the road to 30. Told you guys that. I'm not saying. Stop making me sing. But, <laughs> like I said, there is a lot of confusion around, like, you know, my dad, my, my aunt, and her kid. Nobody, she has never come out and said who the father of my cousin is. Which is weird because, you know, now nobody's ever going to know because my aunt is actually dead now. So she cannot actually come out and say what actually happened. So it will remain a buried family secret forever. Is my cousin, who is the fucking son of my mom's twin, really my half-brother? And is my brother, who is the son of my father, with my mother... Is he actually my half-brother, or are we really brothers, or are all of us, all of us, half-brothers, or is anybody full-blooded? We don't even know. We do, the world may never know. So, unless my mom continues to be the person that she is and keep a secret, like I said, we will not know. But if she feels like making a confession one day, or if she listens to the video, she's like, man, he broke it down, he figured it out, he got the Da Vinci Code. Then you know what? Maybe, maybe we'll find out. Maybe this series will be the catalyst to find out exactly what happened surrounding that circumstance. Because I do know that my brother, who found me through my YouTube 10 years later, after not seeing him for 10 years, 
he found me through YouTube. I made a video about that before. Fucking crazy. Mind boom, blown, right? He watches my videos now, so he might actually be watching this series, and he might call up my mom and be like, yo, he's talking mad shit about you on the internet. And then fucking, because <laughs> my brother is kind of like my mom. He will throw you underneath the bus just to make himself a little bit better at that point in time. And you know that's true. If you're watching this, you know it's true. You know, everybody in our family does it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, my name is Jay. Morning after kill. And those are my fucked up parents and my fucked up childhood. <laughs> so, I want you guys to throw a thumbs up on this video. It is my first episode of my Road to 30 where I'm going to give you my raw and unedited autobiography story. So, like I said, my name is Jay More than Anthony Kill. Make sure you guys are ready to come and subscribe. I want to thank you guys for watching, and I'm going to see you guys later. Neutralized. I got him.